Hey guys, my name is Landon Vixer, and I'm going to be talking today about the David Vesey reactor incident, um, and in particular, boron and boric acid and how it contributed and actually caused the corrosion on top of the reactor pressure vessel head. Uh, after this point, I'll be referring to the reactor pressure vessel head as RPV because I have a hard time saying that, uh, those words in a row, but uh, basically we're going to talk about how boron is uh, introduced to the system and introduced to the atmosphere and was introduced to the top of the head to create the corrosion that occurred in the incident of David Vest. Uh, we'll start by discussing what a neutron moderator is. Um, neutron moderators are a medium that basically reduce the speed of uh, fast neutrons to create thermal neutrons, uh, which allow fission reactions to occur. Uh, fission obviously creates uh, heat, um, which in turn creates steam, which is used to generate power in reactors. Um, generally, a good moderator is considered a moderator that doesn't have impurities. Um, but in the case of reactor control, we want some impurities in that moderator because the impurities give us a way to control the rate of reactivity, uh, control flux tilt, and um, power distribution. Um, and one of the impurities that is commonly used, especially in pressurized water reactors, is boron. Um, boron is introduced to the system and controlled um, and diluted and used to control reactivity as the core goes through its life. Um, boric acid is corrosive but in the case of the pressurized water reactor, it's inside of the primary system and only comes in contact with stainless steel, which is not um, subject to corrosion by boric acid. Um, so for boric acid to be introduced to the atmosphere and to be introduced to the components that are corrosive to it, we'll talk about that, how that happened. Um, basically, the top of the RPV is, uh, or the RPV, reactor pressure vessel head is made of carbon steel. Um, this is used because it's considered a forged material um, and has minimal welds uh, and is great for pressure containment. Uh, obviously a huge plus for a reactor um, containing the high pressure inside. Um, the problem with the carbon steel is that while it's great for containing high pressure, it is uh, subject to corrosion. Um, and on the next slide, I'll show you how they battled that. Um, this is basically a diagram what the reactor pressure vessel head looks like. Uh, on the top, these are your control rod drive mechanisms. They penetrate into the top of the head. Um, inside here is your primary system um, with your primary coolant containing the boric acid. Um, now, boric acid leakage isn't something that was unheard of before David Vess. In fact, it was uh, very well documented. It was controlled in a boric acid corrosion control program dictated by the NRC. Um, so they knew that there was a potential for leakage. Primarily, primarily leakage was seen at the flanges, um, and these were regularly inspected per you know, dictations by the NRC so that um, they could be replaced or repaired as necessary to prevent um, primary water leakage. Uh, the issue with David Vesey is that the leakage that occurred was actually at the penetration right here um, and was underneath this layer of insulation, so it wasn't readily it wasn't, it wasn't able to be seen through a visual inspection without removing that, and that was not done. Um, and subsequent ultrasonic testing, eddy current testing, stuff like that that's non-invasive and non-visual um, wasn't done far enough down to indicate that there was leakage there. Um, so inside this primary system, there's this layer right here, this black line of stainless steel cladding. It's only about 3 eighths inch thick, but it's basically a boundary in between the primary water and that carbon steel to prevent uh, the boric acid from corroding. Um, so when uh, primary water is released through a leak, whether it's in the CRDM flanges or this, uh, you know, the place where it happened at David Vest, the water flashes to steam and subsequently uh, the boric acid is uh, concentrated and falls and uh, accumulates um, in the area below where it's leaking and that's what happened here and the corrosion occurred. Uh, it was almost a football-sized hole of corrosion that probably occurred over a several-year period um, because it had been so long since the uh, insulation had been removed and that pressure vessel boundary or pressure vessel head had been inspected. Um, so how this happened uh, was for several reasons. Uh, obviously, there were some design issues um, with leakage occurring at that location and um, different materials were used. Um, on top of that, 
Um, on top of that, um, the program did not address uh, leakage at that particular part. It only addressed leakage at known um, sources such as the flanges. Um, so people had been in the industry for a long time relied completely on that program and didn't really use common sense to think about things. Um, boric acid deposits were found long after visual inspections of all uh, of the CRDM drive CRDM nozzles were inspected um, and repaired, and people still attributed it to possible leakage from those when they had already been repaired and they knew there was no leakage from there. So people didn't use the common sense to think where else could this be coming from. Um, also, there was a misconception that when the primary uh, water leaves and flashes to steam, that the boric acid that's left is so dry and concentrated that corrosion is not um, is inhibited. That turns out not to be the case. Um, so several things were good that were discovered from this, and it was good that an incident didn't occur. Um, but obviously, the understanding of how boric acid um, can be introduced into the atmosphere and introduced to systems that aren't prepared to deal with it um, was was a big issue. Um, and final thing. is that we discovered that there's really no substitute for uh, visual inspections. We call them bare metal inspections, basically removing um, that layer of insulation and inspecting that reactor pressure vessel head. There's no substitute for it. Ultrasonic testing, if it would have been done farther down, would have helped um, and would have aided in discovering this incident a lot sooner, possibly, but there's really no substitute for um, actually inspecting um, that area there. And uh, also what was discovered was it's great to have a strong reliance on a strong program such as the boric acid corrosion control program, but unless you're using your mind and thinking outside the box when something doesn't seem right, like the large amounts of boric acid deposits they were finding in the containment air cooler systems and in the filters, and knowing that there weren't any primary leaks from the, uh, the, you know, the, the usual suspects, nobody thought well, where, where might this be coming from and why are we seeing this? Um, so a lot of things were learned from this. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Uh, this is my first time doing something like this. So uh, any positive feedback is appreciated. Thanks, guys.